Hey, hello, Central Penn. This is Dylan Bowman. This is Aaron Harrison. And you're listening to the CPC Gauntlet Podcast. So today we're gonna we're gonna start looking into a topic that's some people might might not even really know that much about, and that is uh, cheating in online courses, and has become very prevalent in uh, recent years, especially after COVID and with the fact that schools have now started turning to online classes being a very major part of schooling. Uh, some schools are actually requiring and stating that they must have online courses to operate. Um, Aaron, what are you, some of your thoughts on just the fact that this topic has become such a big thing? Um, I think it's very crucial in today's world. Um, the pandemic is really like, it changed the whole scheme of how students uh, react and, and move around. Like, it's just a, a crazy factor in how school is working. I know me personally, me being a college student and, and being around such a crazy group of kids, is everybody has their own way of uh, learning. And today's world is online is they cheat. This is how it goes. Yeah, it's really interesting, too. When you look at some of the sources that are out there that discuss this topic, you can easily find, especially, again, in the past couple of years, we've just seen it skyrocket in just some scholarly sources like the Journal of Effective Teaching, there's been findings where people have been finding that students are cheating, not only to cheat on exams and, and such, but they're also using it for things as crazy as like blackmail, mm -hmm. which is insane. I didn't even know that that was a possibility. It's, there's, it's saying here, millions of college students use Chegg, which is a very, very popular mm -hmm. source for students to use. It helps them out with uh, testing, with studying. If they have questions on certain subjects or certain courses or uh, subjects within a course, they can easily go there. If their professors, uh, some professors even send students there to get more information. Mm -hmm. And it's saying here that it enables cheating, which is in a way kind of easy to imagine because if you have access to that kind of information during a course, it easily enables you to, in an online course, no one's there watching you right. over your shoulder. And it allows for someone to be at home. They can be taking an exam, and then they go to Chegg.com, and they can easily get the answers for mm -hmm. what they want to do. But in this particular source, what I found so surprising was the possibility of blackmail, which if you look at it here, it's, it's insane. We got a quote here saying, A professor, Guterres, snapped into action to get in touch with a student who had been accused of cheating. And days earlier, the Texas student said he had received an email threatening to disclose that he had used Chegg fraudulently to complete his coursework unless he paid off the person via PayPal. Hmm. And it says here, quote, this is from the blackmailer, I have sources everywhere and understand you have an exam coming up, the threatening email read. It would be a shame if something happened regarding the score. And the professor was kind of enraged by this and it's basically extorting that person, right. which is insane. Like, what are your thoughts on that? I've never heard of it. Before. I never heard of it like that either. Uh, that's just blackmailing like that is ridiculous. Like, you can't hold somebody against their like their will like that and threaten them because of like you have your own source. That's that exactly. Make any sense. It like takes it to a whole nother yeah, level. It takes it way further than it has, has to be. I mean, cheating in itself is bad enough, but that's just like a whole nother thing. Even the whole thing with what what you found, uh, the Dartmouth cheating scandal. Mm -hmm. uh, came out from the New York Post. Uh, students were being tracked online, and I'm believing here it was saying about how uh, 17 students were accused of cheating in a very major exam. I believe they were medical school students. Right. And for something like that, medical school, like they have to know that information mm -hmm. because it's, other people's lives are in their hands someday. Mm -hmm. And if they're cheating on those exams to get an A+, plus, they might be getting an A plus in that class, but what happens when they go and actually are operating right. on someone down the line? It's really something to uh, look into beyond just the fact that they're cheating to get an A in a course. If you think about it, though, everything is, when it comes to cheating, sometimes behind closed doors, people, they have their own way of, like, learning. Like, once they leave that class, their mind kind of goes blank, and they just don't, like, that professor may not be helping them to their expectations or, like, so when they go home, all of that stuff just goes away. So in their in their way, they go home, learn their on their own, and become better. That's not a great all point. not all institutions allow that. So. That's a really great point. Yeah, this was from a New Hampshire school, but it really, if you think about it, you would think it happens all over the country, right. or even potentially all over the world. Because I'm sure there's other countries that have these kind of online 
classes, but also online, like, for example, Chegg. They probably have something like that Mm -hmm. out there in other countries. But just thinking about it, like you had just said, they go home and they don't really have that knowledge that they need. And even if they're not a medical student, which would be dangerous for people down the line, it's also crazy to think that there's people going out into just the regular workforce, whether Mm -hmm. they're a restaurant owner or a janitor or anything, just it doesn't matter what job they have, they don't have any of that knowledge that they paid for, Mm. which is another huge thing. It's not just like elementary school or anything where you would go and it's kind of part of the community. I mean, you kind of pay for it, but it's not like college where you're paying thousands and thousands of dollars Mm. to get an education. And it's crazy to think that there's people who potentially are cheating on stuff using online sources Mm -hmm. when in the wrong way because you can use those sources and they are an amazing tool. I've used a couple. I don't think I've used Chegg before, but there are other sources out there, other online Mm -hmm. entities that can help with uh, studying and such. And they're really, really helpful tools. For sure. Uh, But using it for the wrong purposes can actually be detrimental. And again, like we said with the uh, Dartmouth case in New Hampshire, it can actually be deadly, Mm -hmm. which is crazy to think. Or you get people, like in the other source we just had, or they're blackmailing their mm-hmm. teachers and their friends or their fellow peers mm-hmm. into giving them money because of cheating. Mm-hmm. So it's really interesting. Yeah, once you start plagiarizing and, and and using other people's work, that's when it just gets out of hand. That's when, like, that's really the definition of really cheating. But and in certain cases, like in the Dartmouth, and I know certain firefighters that take the their tests, they use Socratic. Not all, like, cheating is valuable, like. Some people use it different ways. So Exactly. It's a really pressing uh, matter in society, it seems mm-hmm. like, especially now, again, with the fact that online classes have become so prevalent. And what we're going to touch on in our next little snippet of this podcast is about how COVID has affected that. Mm-hmm. And it's such a big piece. It has affected the world and our country in so many ways. And one of them, though it seems smaller in the grand scheme, is the fact that schools have really turn to online sources and technology to get people to learn and get their students into a learning environment and get them learning from home, and especially during the pandemic. But uh, we're going to touch a bit on that in our next segment. But yeah, it's just really interesting to see how dark some things can turn like that. And what, like kind of like you said, with plagiarism as a very similar example to cheating, once you go down that path, it starts, it's harder and harder. To, it's a very mm-hmm. slippery slope. Mm-hmm. It's harder to come back from. So why why is this a problem overall in society, do you think? Um, I think it's, I think it's a, a deeper problem once it starts, like, like, like you said, turning dark. So once you start putting yourself in a hole by like, even like adding to a lie, like lying about it, keeping it type of like secretive and not letting your professor know like that you need additional help. And you like you just put yourself in a hole and just start cheating and cheating using different uh, outlets and outlets to, like you said, plagiarize. Then it just starts exactly. turning, turning, turning. It does, and I think it's also a problem that we have to be aware of because if it ends up becoming something that more and more people grow comfortable with, mm-hmm. it's going to just keep going down downhill. Yeah. And more and more people will grow comfortable with uh, cheating, and education in itself might end up stop being a good thing for people. It might not be as enlightening anymore. So we're going to end it here for right now. We're going to come back and touch on in our next segment about how COVID has affected this and become such a prevalent issue. This is the Central Penn Gauntlet. This is Dylan Bowman speaking, and we will be right back. You're listening to the CPC Gauntlet podcast with Dylan Bowman and Aaron Harrison. We'll be right back. Hello, Central Penn. You're listening to the CPC Gauntlet Podcast with Dylan Bowman and Aaron Harrison. All right, so we're going to get back into uh, cheating in online courses, which if you listen to our last segment, it's a big problem. It's a really big problem in today's world, especially after um, schools came out of COVID and it became like a thing where some schools were actually saying that they needed, it was required that they had these classes to operate as a school, these online courses, which is kind of mind-boggling to me. But what we're going to touch on in this segment is a bit about how COVID 
has affected that, how it basically spawned this problem. And it, it, it's basically a like 80% of it, I would say, is due to COVID and what happened from that, uh, especially from kids needing to stay home, being in at home, and they had to do the online courses through the internet. And that kind of spawned this idea that they would be able to use sources like or online sources like Chegg to to cheat, which is really crazy. And we got a couple sources here. Aaron, I know you found some really, really interesting stuff. What do you got for us? Yeah, um, I was looking and digging through, finding research, you know, doing my doing my day's work. But uh, I came across the CNBC March 2021. So I came across this information, and it basically was saying that students basically use remote. Um, they are really accustomed to using remote. It's really easier using their phones during exams, coming with notes. Right. And uh, – it's basically like they're just finding their behavior on Zoom more accustomed. Like, it's just very easy to them. Right. And uh, during a study for the Imperial College London, they basically were saying that the percentage jumped 200% over the last two wow. years. Wow, that's crazy. Just cheating, like cheating. And all of that has come from Chegg. Uh, Chegg has played a very major part in, in cheating. A lot of students go to it. They use it as a helper, whether it's exams, tests, they just find their way there, Socratic. They just turn to these outlets based off of just not knowing or, or just additional help. It was also some uh, some experts saying that the COVID data, it's, it's kind of slim, but at the same time, it's basically going up due to the pandemic. The pandemic had everybody in the house. Just There's no uh, teacher to talk to daily. Some teachers are not getting back to them, so they just turn to these outlets to basically like forced their hand like they just they just right, had yeah. no help at the time so they just turn to those uh, outlets and get the help some pass some don't but they just go for it right looking at the the CNBC article here real quick before we would move on something crazy that i just noticed in here is the fact that it's Chegg is a huge one because mm-hmm. it directly relates to online course material and helping with studying and right. such but What we also have here in this uh, CNBC article is the fact that it's not just Chegg, which Mm -hmm. is kind of interesting. There's, aside from people searching on it for answers on like Google, just Google searches regular, which is the easiest way I would think. You also have people looking here on places like TikTok, which is, which is crazy. They're like uh, kind of collaborating, offering up tips for people Mm -hmm. who might be asking for questions. TikTok is like a video. It's like YouTube. Like right. You wouldn't think that that even has anything to do with it, and yet it's still being used for online cheating, mm-hmm. which I think is insane. Uh, you got uh, all kinds of different places such as Chegg, which has probably the highest rating, I would say, in terms of people using it for help in online courses. But something else you had said, which is really interesting, before you would move on to the next source, is that... It, this source here from CNBC is from 2021. Yes. That's a whole year after the pandemic mm-hmm. had happened, mm-hmm. and there was still online cheating. Mm-hmm. That kind of leads into the fact that, again, there are schools that are still using online courses as a major part of their mm-hmm. schooling system. And we see it in articles like this, where even just the date itself shows how far this is going. And it's st- we still even see it here in 2022 it just starting off. It goes to show you that a lot of people had gotten accustomed to it. They just wasn't going to drop what they were doing to, exactly. to fix the problem. They just were going to keep continue to do what works, and that's just cheating online. And the helping. slippery slope, yep. exactly. Yep. They also um, they described the students and how they actually cheat during the Zoom classes, and they figure out, like, some students on Zoom, they – they um the, the professors make you do a room check. They do the room check. You got to show your room. Oh, around. that thing sucks. But <laughs> some students, even though when they do the room check, they place their phone or their notes on the like a, a flat table, like where the camera can't see them. They they basically finesse their way and still cheating. Like wow, it's crazy how they described it. Um, they were saying like uh some after they do the room check, they have their screen on the uh on the on the table. Some write notes on their wrist or their their wow. shoulders, their arms. And um, they take the test. Some, some some professors require you take a test with a mirror in front of you, so like they can see if you have anything to your like advantage. Right. Have you ever had to do the the screen? I never had thing. to do that. Really? I never had to do that. Oh, it sucks so bad. There was uh, I was in hack actually, mm-hmm. and I think it was one of my last classes before I had transferred here to Central Penn, and it was an exam 
nothing major. It wasn't like a medical exam where mm-hmm. it's a major thing, but it was an exam. I think it was my final exam, and you have to turn your computer to show your entire room. <laughs> and I'm guessing, like, if anyone else is standing in there, it's like sends an alert, but right. it was bad. Again, it would say, oh, your room's not well lit enough. Mm-hmm. Please turn on some lights. I'm like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so it's it's crazy just how far they're trying to make sure that people aren't cheating. Yeah, we're going to uh, dive into the NPR uh, source. According to the NPR source, uh, Maryam Alley, an assistant professor at Columbia University, uh, she tried to do everything she could to keep her students from cheating. Um, they she, She's a neuroscience uh, teacher. Um, okay. She gave them like a, a week for an open book exam just to like make sure they wouldn't cheat and right. just to get things done. You have a week to do it. There's no, there's no way you're cheating. Like Yeah, exactly. But uh, she also does a. Um, she makes all her kids sign a honor code, so they like write their signature down, make sure they don't cheat, don't go against their word types. Right. Even though they did that, she still had students uh, had misconduct during the COVID crisis. Um, VCU also reported that 1,077 kids went against the misconduct. Man, uh, that's three times the previous year. And that's so, the people who signed the honor yeah, code. Yeah, that's people who signed the honor code. They went against it. Wow. That's three times. So that's like, that's ridiculous. It that's is. Three it times really the is. previous year? Come on now. And uh, they said cheating had went up 50% over the past two years. It says here, too, collaboration, which would be, I'm guessing, like group projects, yes, which yes. we've both, I'm mm-hmm. sure, have had uh, several of those in college. Collaboration <laughs> morphs into cheating, mm-hmm. which sounds like people probably even do that in, in person mm-hmm. groups sometimes. But it's interesting to see that probably through Zoom mm-hmm. and uh, Microsoft Teams and other sources where people can collaborate via the Internet, it's turning into online cheating as well, right. which is kind of unfortunate because those group projects are supposed to be able to facilitate common uh, common sense and as well as um, critical thinking. Right. And that kind of is just thrown out the window mm-hmm. as people are just collaborating on cheating. Right. That's what it is. Yeah, to just pass the, pass the grade on whatever – uh, project or quiz they're on. But when you think about it, when you come together like that, especially in a setting through Zoom, everybody's not gonna want to put their whole effort into what's going on. Like they're gonna want to like want help and collaborate and work on cheating. That's just how it goes. Like everybody's not gonna want to put their effort into it. Right. It kind of makes sense in that way. Here you got too in the NPR article of yours when cheating feels like the only option. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some people out there that do feel like oh my goodness, this is so difficult. Mm -hmm. I feel like I have nothing left to do. Maybe it's through collaboration. Maybe it's on their own individually. Mm -hmm. And maybe they feel like I have to cheat on this Mm -hmm. so that I can get a decent grade. Even if it's not an A, I have to cheat so that I can get a passing grade on this Mm -hmm. to pass the class, pass whatever. And and if you think about that, it is kind of, it sounds very unfortunate, but is cheating the only option? Not really. I mean... Everybody has their own ways of, like, the things they go through, anxiety, all types of stuff like that. But I don't know. People just turn to what they feel is relevant at the time. Like, they just, at the time, they just need help. And their only help is to get help through the way they know. Right. It's saying it's saying here, too, that students, since they feel like this is at times the only option, they feel like they have to opt out of the class. Right. That might be a secondary option to mm-hmm. cheating is just to, to quit, mm-hmm. to just drop the class. This has been a really interesting part of this. It's a huge, major, I would say almost the core to online cheating, especially in our world now as things start winding down from COVID. We're still seeing it having spawned from COVID. And it's just a really important part to getting into our next segment, which is uh, personal thoughts and experience that we have had, as well as we're going to also have on in the next segment, Professor Miller and his insight from a professor's standpoint here at Central Penn College. So we're going to wrap that up in the next segment. I'm Dylan Bowman. You are listening to the CPC Gauntlet Podcast. Hey, you're listening to the CPC Gauntlet Podcast with Dylan Bowman and Aaron Harrison. We'll be right back in a minute. Hello, Central Penn. This is Dylan Bowman and Aaron Harrison, and you're listening to the final segment of the CPC Gauntlet podcast. We're going to touch on the last part of cheating in online courses, how prevalent that is in our society today. And with us, we have Professor Paul Miller. 
who is going to give us a little bit of professor insight from Central Penn College and what he has known about online cheating. Welcome, Professor Miller. Thank you. It's uh, my pleasure to be here and a very important topic in higher education that I, I would love to uh, s- sort of provide my own personal experiences. Absolutely. So for a first question for you, Professor Miller, what is your personal knowledge and experience with any online cheating, especially on Central Penn campus, but even beyond that? You know, we always have to deal with um, academic integrity issues, plagiarism, in that maybe somebody is going to, to Google and is finding direct information in which they are copying and pasting into assignments, projects, quiz questions, things like that. I mean, that kind of thing has been around forever. Where I see, and again, I, I'm fortunate that I don't see a whole lot of, of cheating, but a lot of that is in the design of the class. Depending on how a professor designs a class can encourage or discourage cheating in that if, for example, a vast majority of your grade is based on tests and quizzes, there's going to be a lot more opportunity for for people to cheat. Whereas if you have sort of open-ended discussion, papers, uh, short answer questions on tests, makes it much, much, much more difficult for students to cheat. So frankly, um, and this is this is my personal opinion, and, and this is really just about my pedagogy or my approach to teaching, you can set your class up to not really allow people to cheat. I mm-hmm. think a lot of the times people do see folks cheating is if they are putting a multiple choice test out there, which frankly, guess what? Multiple choice tests, th- that stuff's online. You guys have been talking about Chegg. Uh, Quizlet right. is one of the right. most popular. Basically what happens is people will put quiz questions mm-hmm. up on Quizlet, and I've found my own test questions that I made up on Quizlet. Wow. So it, it does happen. I do think that it's important for people who are professors in the online space to understand that cheating is going to happen. Right. It's how can we limit that so the somebody's whole entire grade isn't based on someone cheating. Exactly. And like you said, the multiple choice thing seems to – you're almost – in an online course especially, you're kind of asking for it it seems. And it, it's kind of unfortunate because multiple choice is a very common way to have a test question. But like you said, Quizlet, Chegg, people can just throw on answers there, even ones that someone like yourself has made up. Now have you, you and the faculty had a discussion about this like- I'm really glad you asked that question, Aaron, because we have. um, Now, I I do also want to point out that in my teaching almost 10 years now, um, I have taught at other institutions. I I did teach at Hack as well. So this is a conversation that happens across higher education. Um, But what's really interesting is um, one thing that we have done as a faculty is we've understood that, hey, this is happening. How can we combat this? And um, we are trying through our Center of Teaching Excellence, um, the CTE here at Central Penn, um, we are actually having some professional development sessions in order to help us design our courses to limit the opportunities of cheating. But one thing I do want to point out, gentlemen, um, yes, cheating in online classes is is very buzzworthy, but the bottom line is cheating happens in all classes. Aaron, you made the point earlier, people writing stuff on their hands. I mean, I'm sure that people have been in my class writing things Mm -hmm. on their hands. So it's not just the online component. People are going to cheat. It's how can we make this class design that limits the ability of people cheating? Mm-hmm. You guys made, and I just want to make this final comment. You guys made a really interesting point earlier. Uh, and it was in, the, I believe, the NPR article that you were talking about. When people feel like cheating is the only option, Mm -hmm. one of the most important things that you can do as a faculty member is create an open environment where students, at least for the most part, feel willing to ask you questions. Exactly. Because if you don't have positive communication with your students, they're going to resort to cheating. If you're not answering their emails or you're not giving them quality information or quality resources – someone's going to resort to cheating because you are you don't have that positive communication with them. I think what also is interesting is because we don't see people. Um, I, maybe I, I talk to some of my students uh, regularly in my online classes, but that's pretty rare because we're asynchronous. So I think there's the, the lack of accountability because you don't actually physically see somebody also contributes that, sort of that nameless, faceless right. student. And, and unfortunately here at Central Penn, we do a really good job of trying to 
engage our online students, but across the board, that's some of the major issues that you see. But yes, we have not only addressed this, understand it's an issue, but we're also uh, engaging in some faculty development as well to help address it. That's wonderful. That's really cool to hear that uh, it's it's aware that that's happening and that it, there's change being brought about from that. I just kind of want to throw this uh, little wrench into our machine going on here. From the Journal of Effective Teaching, the source here, this particular article was a study on how students view cheating and how they think that cheating on, in online courses comes about. And one of the major uh, lines from the discussion at the end of this study that was written is the results of this study indicate that students look to facility to set the boundaries of acceptable learning behaviors. Facility need to establish and communicate the boundaries of acceptable learning behaviors in online courses. And I just thought that was something interesting to throw in here, especially with Professor Miller here, about the fact that students are at times looking for the right thing to do, mm -hmm. but they might have the, the one option thing in their mind. And if facility members, like Professor Miller said, have that open communication with them, there's a better chance that there'll be an establishment of rules and regulations and here's how not to cheat and actually study well. And I just thought I'd throw that out there for anyone. I want to point out how important it is to understand the particular class. There are some classes that are much better suited for the types of discussions and assignments that I discuss. Where we got some interesting feedback is we do have a health sciences program here. And for example, our um, anatomy and physiology class is a vast majority of, of memorization. Mm -hmm. And so in that particular case where you must know the bones and the muscles and you know if you're getting into these health sciences fields, that's a little bit different in terms of an exam, trying to memorize. Dylan, as you know, and Aaron, as you know, a lot of the things that we're talking about we're not asking you to memorize anything. In fact, right. if anything, it's apply and analyze. So I will say that in my area, it is definitely easier to try to curtail cheating than in some of the health sciences areas. So I, I did want to point that out. Right. I do think that dependent on how a faculty member sets up a class, that that is sort of indicative of the amount and level that people can cheat. But it, it all goes back, and, and I found this right here in your article. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. But the bottom line is, if somebody's cheating, they're frankly just cheating themselves. Um, unfortunately, because we are still trying to maintain the importance of higher education, I think that um, a lot of times professors kind of don't look at it that way. And, and I, I really think that moving forward, you're going to continue seeing more and more online classes, and the design of those classes has to be done properly. Exactly. I want to talk about the Roanoke uh, article that I found um, it's about a Virginia Tech student who was uh, found guilty of uh, cheating, using Chegg, and uh, going against the honor system. The honor system ended up uh, getting in involved with him and uh, taking him to court. He ended up taking him to the higher court. And um, they, the student received the F in his class, and he decided to basically go against it, wanted to fight it, and uh, take it to the court. But the court actually denied him because they, they found information on him and the the whole entire class. It was basically sixty students wow. that uh, were using Chegg and ended up getting caught. But him being him, he just or the student anonymously, they wanted to fight and use their rights, but it didn't go well. The victim claimed that he was actually using Chegg for online sources, but he said that he wasn't plagiarizing and didn't take it to that high level of basically cheating. So what's really interesting here is one thing that I do, and I'm sure both of you know this, um, I provide a study guide that I allow students to use on exams. And there's a reason that I do that, mainly because every single class that you gentlemen take here on campus is also offered online, right? Mm -hmm. Right. How is it fair for me to sit you down in my class and not allow you to use some type of, of aid, and then the same person takes that class online and has basically free will, free will exactly. to do whatever they want. Now, is using a study guide a little different than having the utmost amount of information out there? Mm -hmm. Of course, because, of course, they can go to Google and they can do things like that that you can't and shouldn't. But that's why I'm very specific with how I put my study guides out there because I'm trying to make it fair to those students who take it here on campus versus those students who take it online. And that's why it's 
you know, one of the hallmarks of all of my classes, you know, midterm, final time, you're going to have to do a study guide. Mm -hmm. That's why, because I want to try to level that playing field from our, our online students to our, our daytime and evening students as well. That's a really neat parallel. I never thought of it like that before. And as a last call to action for anyone listening, cheating isn't your only option. You got great professors here at Central Penn College who I'm sure would be willing to help you out in any way possible. Mm -hmm. Whether you're an online student or on campus student, there's ways to get around that and to get a passing grade or even a great grade just by going and getting help from those professors. Professor Miller, thank you so much for being on this podcast episode. We can't thank you enough. I really appreciate it. It's something I'm very passionate about and something I hope to try to help my fellow colleagues uh, try to address as best we can. All right, Central Penn, this is Dylan Bowman and Aaron Harrison, and we are the CPC Gauntlet Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.